Ramshinators, 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 it is so good to be back talking with you once again. This is a special broadcast unlike any other. In fact, this may be the last broadcast you watch before you truly start living your life and take control of your destiny. Because in this broadcast, I am revealing secret information that was passed down to me by the Illuminati bloodline organizations of which I am a part. Yes, here for the first time on Ramshi Radio and on the internet, I am coming forward with my connections to the dark, shadowy underworld, the occult ongoings, and the alien presences that secretly want run the world behind the scenes. I'm a part of it. I'm a big part of it. And recently I've been thinking a lot about our human situation. Living in this cost of, cost of living crisis. The numbers keep going up no matter how hard you work. You feel like you can never get ahead. You feel like no matter how smart you are, you're not smart enough to beat the system. Even if you work three jobs and sell pictures of yourself online, you still can't get enough money together to purchase a one-bedroom condo way high up in the sky where no one will ever find you. This was not the life you were promised. This is not the life I was promised. But I'm here to impart to you some very special information, and that is that the cost of living crisis will be over in two weeks' time, 14 days. Tops. This whole crisis, all the crises that we've experienced in our modern time, they've all been planned. The world is a stage, as Eric Clapton once said. And this is all being planned. The, the strings are being pulled behind the scenes. And in two weeks' time, all of this will seem like a bad dream because we're gonna get the alien cream. Let me show you what I mean. In two weeks time, discus shaped clouds will begin to form above all major cities on earth. These clouds will actually be magical trans-dimensional spaceships carrying a alien race known as the Arcturian femdroids. Now, don't let your little human mind be confused. The term femdroids does not imply female in this sense, for this alien race is beyond sex. But that doesn't mean we're not making babies, because the first line of business of the Arcturian femdroids is to make semen rain from the sky. This rain will be acidic and treacherous. This baby-making juice will penetrate the shingles of your home and make its way into your bed and into your body. And you will be impregnated with an alien seed. Let me just give you a second to think about what I'm telling you. Do you see those condo buildings going up around you? Do you ever think to yourself, who can possibly afford these? Who's living in these big luxury condos? I can't afford them. None of my friends can afford them, but obviously somebody's living in them, right? That's for you and me, baby. It's for you and me and our new alien sugar daddies because that's gonna be the relationship. We will be impregnated from the sky and we will be taken care of by these aliens. Our only job will be rearing the new alien-human hybrids, stuck in these tiny condo boxes way up in the sky. They will deliver us the foods that we need from across the earth with drone-like robots. We will never actually see face-to-face -face what the Arcturian fembots look like. I mean, I've seen it, but that's because I'm on the inside, baby. You will never see them. If you want to see what an artist's depiction of what they look like is, look in the box right there. I'm going to flash it on right now. That's an Arcturian fembot as drawn by um, probably AI. Something. Okay, it's going to go away now. 
Okay. But, despite this information, this completely true information I've just given you, you still have to survive the next two weeks in the cost of living crisis. So what's the deal with that? Well, I do have some tips. Okay, I have some tips, I have some tricks. I'm gonna show you how to save a little money. You see, because I have found through careful inventory of my own life that most of my obscene spending comes from simply eating lunch at work. I know how it is. You're too busy, the kids are running around, the boss is on your back, and you just can't find the time to meal prep. So you're at work, you go walk down the street for lunch, and you get yourself a big honkin' fish burrito every single day, five days a week, 20 times a month. At least that's my weakness. A big old fat fish burrito every day. Now I did the math. I did the math. And I have actually spent about two million dollars on fish burritos in the past year. That is more than enough to afford a small one-bedroom condo in my area. I have been an absolute buffoon going to this Mexican restaurant and ordering these fish burritos every day. So I'm on track now to have some money saved for when the Arcturians arrive. Um, but they will be replacing our monetary system anyway, so it's just for me, just for me to feel good. That's why I'm doing it. Doing what, you ask? That is meal prepping. And I'm gonna share with you the quick and easy way I've been meal prepping is that you, uh, you get a can of soup, you eat that hot, and then directly after, you eat a piece of bread with peanut butter on it that's been in the fridge, and that's cold. Okay, so can of soup hot, peanut butter cold, the hot and cold mixture, that's a yin and yang union. That's perfect symmetry. That is gonna bring you into balance and harmony with the universe. Um, in a way, you can think of it as a Jungian, you know, the hot is the face you show the world, the cold is your shadow self. Um, by eating the hot and then the cold, you are in fact bringing your shadow and your, and your light side together, becoming a whole human being. And to tie this into what we're talking about earlier, this is actually how the Arcturians will be feeding us. So it's good to get us start on it now. Can of soup, piece of bread with peanut butter. And when it comes to uh, picking the can of soups, you know, there's so many options. So I'm gonna help you out there too. So next time you go to the grocery store, I want you to find the soups and then I want you to square up with them. The soups are in front of you. You put, your, you put your shoulders up to the soups. You're looking right at the soups, okay? If you look down at your feet, you'll see the cheap soups and the giant, the giant cans of these cheap soups. And you might be saying, Ram, see, that's the soup for me. It's so big and it's so cheap. It's, that's got to be the way. That's got to be the way to save money. No. Those soups are apocalypse soups. Those are soups for people who are living in a different timeline. They are living in the zombie apocalypse timeline where they will have to scavenge the stores for these types of soups and survive off them for years running away from mutilated corpses. You are in the Arcturian uh, sperm rain, baby making timeline. So you don't have to worry about those. What I want you to do, look at the soups, put your eyes directly up Oh my God, what's up there? Those are the nice soups, the nice organic soups, the nice $5 a can soups. That's the soup you're gonna pick. You're gonna pick that soup because you're worth it, okay? Even if you're broke, you can't afford shit, you are worth a nice can of soup. You don't have to get the shittiest kind. It's still cheaper than the fish burrito. You're still gonna save $2 million a year. Believe me, I did the math. This is what homeowners do. This is what my parents did. This is what your parents did. It's a shame that we're only figuring it out now.
I have another tip. I have another tip to help you for the next two weeks in the cost of living crisis. It's, uh, and that is just to maybe just try for a second to just be grateful for the life that you've been given. I know that it's not the life you were promised by movies and television and maybe your own parents and maybe a lot of people around you are doing better than you are. But chances are you still live a pretty incredibly privileged life when compared to a lot of human beings who have ever existed. Many of the great holy books and the great works of art of, of you know, human civilization were made in times before people were able to even wash their own assholes. Like in the Roman Empire, they had sponges on sticks and they would just scrub their ass with it and then you'd hang it to your, hand it to your friend and your friend would scrub his ass with it. It's unbelievable. It's crazy. Um, I forget which Roman philosophy book this was. I'm so smart, by the way. Um, but apparently some, some, some guy like shoved that in his mouth and he died. I don't know. That's how people were. And that's when all that... That's when Meditations was written. The guy who wrote Meditations, Marcus Aurelius, cleaned his ass with a sponge on a stick. Think about that. Think about how privileged you are to live in this beautiful, this beautiful world. We have so many cures for ailments. We can walk down the street and hopefully feel safe. We can look at the cornucopia of humanity that surrounds us at all times and know that it is our birthright, that it is inseparable from us. All these beautiful people, all these beautiful works of art, all these beautiful pieces of music, all at our fingertips, all this creativity available, all this self-expression. You can share your thoughts, you can share your goals, and you know what, if you're lucky, you'll have a beautiful group of friends, maybe somebody who loves you a whole lot, maybe your parents, maybe your family. There's so much to be grateful for. There's so much to be grateful for in this world outside of the fact that we're in a cost of living crisis. And I hope that over the next two weeks you get to really appreciate that before your life completely changes. Because it's going to change. It's going to be a big change for all of us. I'm reminded of something that happened to me earlier this week. Um, this, this old man came up to me probably about the age of 60, and he said, son, have you ever heard of or watched the show the, the Big Bang Theory? And I said, I've heard of it. I've never seen it, though. But I know it's the, the, the show with Sheldon. There's a character, Sheldon. And he says, you've never seen the Big Bang Theory? You're living a deprived life. Go home right now and watch it. It's so funny. It's five nerds and a hottie who lives across the hall. The hijinks they get into, you would not believe. It's nine seasons in. Go watch it now. It's going to blow your mind. And then he walked away. This man had seen life. He's experienced death. He's probably experienced divorce. He's had his truck break down on the highway. He's been left behind by a cold and uncaring world. He has decided not to let that get him down. He has decided not to feel sorry for himself. What he has decided to do is to watch The Big Bang Theory and fucking love it and share that with a stranger like me. And I think we all should take a page out of that man's book and just appreciate the little beautiful things that we like. I like watching the wind hit the trees. I like watching the leaves shake around. I also like watching uh, the show Joe Para Talks to You. If you can't tell, this whole thing is kind of a ripoff of that. Joe Para Talks to You and Let's Paint TV. Those are the two inspirations for this whole thing. And that story reminds me of an even deeper story, and I'm not sure where this story is from. If you know where this story is from, please let me know down below. But it's the story of a soldier being chased by an enemy army, and he's being chased towards a, a cliff. He's being chased towards a cliff, and, and he gets to the end, and he's, he's, he realizes he can't turn back, so he just begins to fall off the cliff. And as he falls, he, he starts to tumble. Oh, he's tumbling down. He reaches his arm up and he grabs a ledge. And all of a sudden he's hanging, he's dangling by his arm. 
and he's already fought hard, but he knows he has a little bit of strength left. So he starts to try and pull himself up, but he, he just can't seem to do it. And he looks down and he sees a hungry tiger waiting at the bottom, <sighs> waiting to just bite his ball sack right off and eat his fucking penis. This tiger is hungry. And he's hanging there. And he notices there's actually a bush kind of growing out of the side of this cliff. And there's a small branch dangling down it. And on the end of this branch, there's a single small berry. A small, delicious, plump blueberry. His arm is sore and spasming. He knows he cannot hold on much longer. And even if he did ascend the cliff, he would be killed. He surely will fall to his death and have his penis and testicles eaten by a tiger. So in this moment, he simply picks the berry, eats it, and it is the most delicious and sweetest berry he has ever had in his life. And that is exactly what that man is doing with the Big Bang Theory television show. And I think we all have our own little berries in life. And sometimes in life, it's good to just suck on that sweet berry and just be grateful for what we have. Two weeks, Romshinators. The Arcturian femdroids will be here. You will be impregnated. I am correct. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you so much. So if you're watching this, thank you. And let me know who you are and what makes you watch this. If you've made it this far, like I'm trying to work on these videos, I'm trying to get them better. What do you like about this? What do you not like about it? Tell me a little bit about yourself, just so I know what kind of the audience is of the people that are actually watching this far into the videos. And uh, if you know me personally, that's cool. But if you don't, even better. Um, but yeah, just, just let me know because uh, I'm, I'm working on it and I'm excited about it. I think it's cool. Anyways, Romshinators, stay safe. Find your little berry, put it in your mouth. That's all there is, baby. Good night. Sick.